Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now what I've got turning around in front of me here are a bunch of eight or six to eight millimeter, let's say the exact scale of Legio Imperialis is uh, up for debate, but these Death Guard have taken me very little time at all and the end result I think is something you can quite happily put on the table. Now there's a couple of uh, tutorials from Games Workshop already, but they're a little on the simpler side. Um, whereas I still think it's possible that you can get units churned out very quickly without a huge amount of extra effort. And I'm going to show you how to adapt some of the methods that I've used for other legions to legion. Legions? Le epic! It's still bleeding epic, isn't it? But all of the paints will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. All right, so first of all, the elephant in the room. These guys are not official miniatures. Uh, they are 3D prints of Mark II Marines, which are pretty funky. The painting is going to be much the same as you would for your Mark VI guys that you get in the Legions Imperialis box. Uh, the one major difference is that these guys actually have some trim on their shoulder pads. So the official miniatures, for a change of pace, are going to be easier to paint. Uh, but I like these guys, and uh, you can turn out whole scads of them very, very easily. Uh, now, folks have asked me before not to link directly to their files, so a little bit of Google Foo for you know, Mark II Epic. You'll find what you're looking for. Um, I found them without anybody pointing me to them, so I'm sure you can do the same. But whether you are painting prints or official miniatures, first thing to do, of course, once they're cleaned up and popped on their base, is to prime them. Now, I'm painting my Death Guard here much as I would larger scale miniatures, with an important difference. Always start from white. Um, especially if you are painting something using contrast and you you would usually use uh, Wraithbone or Brain Matter Beige, Gracia, whatever, don't start from white because at this scale the contrast, the visual interplay between light and dark is going to be more important. A little quick physics lesson here, there is a wonderful thing called scale fade which refers to the smaller something gets the lighter you have to paint it. Now that is actually because the smaller something is less light interacts with it and then is reflected to our eyes. So that's why if you paint something in 135 scale and then use the same paints to paint a 15 millimeter figure, it's not going to look right because that little guy is going to look much darker. And the same actually applies for our Legion of Imperialis stuff, our epic miniatures. The smaller they are, the lighter they're going to have to be. So starting from a white primer is what I'm going to do here. There you go, look, you learn something every day. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, we're going to lay down the other color, which would be on you know, shoulder pads, backpacks, that sort of thing. Now, from Legion to Legion, this is going to change, but here for my Death Guard, I am using Algae Green. And uh, you see, this just blops on real quick. Now, if I don't get a perfect coverage, I'm not too fussed. And one thing that you will, of course, notice straight away is that I have applied all of my guys to the base before starting to paint. And there's a very simple reason for that. You can paint them on little sticks, but I tend to think you don't really need to. Uh, anything that you struggle to reach, you know, painting them like this, don't worry about it. Which I know is heresy, but that is the uh, point of the game, isn't it? So I'm going to put this over the shoulder pads. Now if you were doing white scars or what do you call them, world eaters, anything like that, it all follows a very similar process. So let's come back in a couple of minutes once I have done all of my shoulder pads and the backpacks. Now that won't take you very long. It's nice and quick and covers quite well. There's nothing stopping you from using a regular acrylic. Something like Elysian Green will work good in this uh, situation, but because I'd already used the speed paint for that, I figured I might as well keep doing it. But one thing where I do want to change what I'm doing here I have Liberator Gold, and I'm going to use this to paint in the gold details on my dudes. Now, like I said, if you are painting the official miniatures, they're likely not going to have to worry about these uh, shoulder trim. My goodness, I may have scuppered myself slightly here, uh, but not something you'll likely have to worry about. <laughs> we'll look cool when it's done, though. Um, other stuff that I'm going to do is to run the brush very carefully along the back of the shoulders, the backpacks here, just to pick up some of the 
Gosh, I can keep it in shot. These guys are so tiny, it's actually really hard to film them. Um, yeah, painting some of the backpack details with this. With the side of my brush, very quickly picking those out like that. And I'm also going to paint in the vexillas. Uh, just blast over the whole thing like this. Now we're starting to get somewhere. You'll see on some of the areas of my trim uh, that it's quite splotchy. You know, it's a little bit rough. I'm not concerned because again, we're painting with something that we can see across the table. We're painting for our opponent to know what they're shooting at, which uh, maybe I should tell them little lies somehow. <laughs> paint for uh, paint for camouflage instead. But what I'm going to move to now is Grim Black from the Army Painter. Uh, you can just as easily use uh, what you call it, Black Legion or Black Templar, but you'll see how quickly, suddenly, that little splash of black makes these guys look finished. Uh, so I'm going to go over all of the bolters. This is a nice quick step. Goodness me. Like I said, really struggling to keep these guys in shot. They're so tiny. And I'm whispering so I don't scare them. But that will be sufficient for a bolter. And I'm going to do that to all of them now. See what a difference those funky little guns make? <laughs> what I'm going to move to next is Iron Hand Steel and start painting in some of the metal details. Now these, just be quick, bop in the ends of bolters and the magazines. I'm not going to bother with the little details. Uh, swords as well. Let's angle him. It's a little easier just to start from the bottom and sweep up. Now I mentioned earlier using lighter colors than you ordinarily would. Uh, Iron Hand Steel is a departure from that, because this is what I usually use on my full-size miniatures. Um, I just think at this sort of this sort of scale, it's not going to matter too much. If you wanted to, though, hop up to something like Stormhost Silver, and you'll get a nice similar finish. I'm also going to paint in... Yes, let's do the little dealy boppers. That'll look a bit more interesting. And then the final step I'm going to do is to apply a little bit of white particularly over helmets. Uh, I just want to look towards the back of the helmets to see if there's anywhere where I have splurged with my quick uh, speed paint rather. And I have, so I'm just going to tidy those up. Um, other bits like this dude's hand gripping his bolter, I will quickly blast a little bit of that on there too. But otherwise this is a very quick tidy up stage. Now once this had a chance to dry, we're going to go ahead and shade these bad boys. Now what I'm going to use, this is my marine juice mix. Uh, this is one of the older bottles that I've got. I'll pop the recipe in the description, and I've done a few videos on this one, so I'll make sure there's a link to how to mix this up these days. But honestly, don't worry too much about it being perfect. Um, you could just as easily use Agrax Earthshade and thin it down a little. Uh, what I'm going to do is blap this straight over the top of all my little guys. As you can see, it'll look quite extreme going on. But a couple of seconds after it settles, it starts to chill out. So I'm now going to go over all of these teeny tiny marines with a coat of marine juice. And we'll give that some time to dry, see what that looks like. And there we have it. You could paint the eyes if you were a masochist. <laughs> or just dot a little bit of red across the vision slit or into the eyes. And then tidy up with the white during that stage, if that's how you want to do it. Uh, but those are a bunch of guys that look pretty much like my full-size, well, my regular Death Guard. If they were full-size, I'd need a much bigger house. From here, you could paint the base, uh, particularly if you've got the plastic bases. That's going to be easy enough. But what I'm going to do is get a little bit of, this is Sterland mud. And you'll see it's actually fairly simple with the littler end just to push this in around the feet on the base. So a quick coat of this, just to add a little bit of texture, and then I will dry brush it, just the same as I would with my regular Death Guard. Um, I'll pop the colors for that in the description too. And uh, yeah, let's get a look at these fellas once my little unit here is all finished. And there at last, there we have... <laughs> Sorry, they're just not as impressive as some of the miniatures I normally have spinning around on this thing. But at last we have our finished uh, Death Guard for Legio Imperialis. Now, these fellas here are really quick to do, and I did promise that I was going to give you some pointers on how you can adapt this to any of the other legions. And in reality, it's quite simple. 
All you need to do, start from a lighter base coat. So whether you are doing a white primer and then giving it a contrast, or you are painting, you know, you're priming it with something and then painting a base coat down, start from the next color up that you normally would. So your layer or even your highlight color will instead be the base for your Legion guys because they're just going to look a little bit better if you go brighter. Now as you see them going round, they are particularly impressive. If I were to hold one of these up to the camera, mm, it might not look all that great. But I think the end result of them whizzing around as they are, they're actually pretty cool. I had fun painting them and I've painted 15 Space Marines in the stretch of time it would normally take me to do a video for one. So I like Epic. <laughs> So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue and resin for mad stuff like this. Including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now, thank you so much for your contributions. You are the folks who are keeping me ticking, really making this happen. Now any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all and you all enjoy the rest of your day.